entrance music may be the most important thing in the world when it comes to being a wrestling superstar. That is a massive over-exaggeration. Like if you have the best entrance music ever, but you get in the ring and you absolutely suck, no one's gonna care. But it is part of the first impression fans are gonna make of you. They're gonna hear your tune. And then if you come out and you're like a badass, they may go, I'm gonna keep an eye on this hot tamale. So that is what we're gonna focus on today. We are gonna go through some wrestlers who decided to take a gamble with new entrance music, and sometimes it worked, and sometimes it absolutely sucked. And as we are talking about the land of music, make sure you check out What Culture Music, where you can get your fix of everything when it comes to music. You can get lists, you can get opinion, you can get reviews. You need it in your life. But for now, my name is Simon Miller. This is What Culture Wrestling. And this is 10 wrestlers who gambled on brand new entrance music. Roll it. Number 10, John Cena. Usually the reason a wrestler will change their entrance music is because their character has become stale and they're looking for things to get them jiving again. And what better way to get jiving than having a brand new theme? But when it comes to John Cena, it was kind of all just part of his evolution or his rise to the top. Because when he was first on the scene, being the Doctor of Thumbonomics, he also had the Doctor of Thumbonomics theme tune and everybody absolutely loved it. There was just something about it that made you pop. It sounded cool and it tied into that character perfectly. In fact, WWE smashed that out of the park. Just as he was about to become the man in WWE on an episode of SmackDown in March 2005, however, all of a sudden he came out to the music that would now become synonymous with him, My Time Is Now or Time Is Now. You know it is the song that you hear and you start going, John Cena sucks, John Cena sucks. I mean, yeah, that's been going on for 15 years. It really does work though. And if you have been watching wrestling since that time, as soon as you hear those opening beats of the music, something inside of you goes, I should start to care. Because regardless what you think about John Cena in today's day and age, he is a massive star and everything he does carries a lot of weight. Also, just to take a little shot at him, because I know people like that, it was kind of only the you know second character transformation he ever took in WWE. The first, you know, dropping the Doctor of Thugonomics thing. The second was his music. Then he figured it all out and was like, you know what? I'm gonna do the same thing over and over and over again. But you can't knock it. You can't insult it because it absolutely worked. His time was indeed now. I regret saying that. Number nine, the Dudley Boys. Sticking with 2005, this was also the same time that the Dudley Boys decided we are a bit bored of our music, why don't they change it up? And despite it being three years past its peak, they decided to have some new metal play them to the ring. That was all thanks to Power Man 5000. And what I really do not understand is why they opted to do this. You remember their original thing, they just went dun 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 dun. It worked so well. There was just something magical about it that made you want to stand and cheer. But this one was the one that went get up, get up, get up, stump, blah, 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 blah. I don't know the lyrics. It didn't even tie into what the Dudley boys were. And also, again, new metal had already died out by that point. Nobody wanted to hear it anymore. And here it is being thrown right into your face. The real issue is that it didn't make you care and it didn't make you react. So it was neither really, really good or really, really bad. And there have been some wrestlers who have had terrible entrance music, but somehow that's gone full circle and you fall in love with it. But genuinely, go on YouTube right now or use whatever you want to use. Listen to the Dudley Boys original theme and then listen to this new one and try and figure out if it would make you enjoy this team more. The answer is no. And soon after this, they left the company anyway. Number eight, Randy Orton. Randy Orton has actually gone through a few entrance themes over the years. And if you didn't know, one of his original ones was My Fire Burns, which of course eventually would go to CM Punk. And that was actually a good choice because it fed CM Punk like a glove. And while Randy Orton was all like snow and conniving, you can't have this super metal riff accompanying you when you walk into the ring. After that, he went to Burn My Light, which he did have for a good few years. And that was the one that just shouted, hey, at you every now and then. It was like, hey, nothing I can say. Hey, nothing, hey. And you're like, would everybody just stop shouting at me? Nowadays, of course, he is accompanied by voices that has incredible lines such as, I hear voices in my head. They talk to me, they understand, which is basically telling you that Randy Orton is a crazy person. And while it's kind of generic rock at its most generic, it works for the Viper, it really, really does. And he must have had this for a damn long time. But at no point have I ever thought, Randy, you better change this up. It's become long in the tooth. So fair play to him for figuring it out. I think it's because there's a sinister vibe to it. And that is the way the character of Randy Orton has always carried themselves. And that is exactly what you're going for when you're coming up 
with your music. It should match your personality so that if a fan has never watched wrestling before, they know what you're all about. Randy Orton smashed this. Number seven, Kurt Angle. Everybody knows this one and it was an ingenious choice by WWE. And if you want to know the title of it is Medal, which was also used by the Patriot, if you remember him from around about 1996. The reason it worked so well though is that it backed up all of Kurt's different guises. So when he was the good guy, even though we thought he was the bad guy, it kind of summed up the majesty he had in his own head. Then when he became the serious worker guy, it became almost like an Olympic theme that accompanied to the ring. And when he was finally a super over baby face, it was patriotic and it was just like, oh, Kurt Angle, he's the best. So why, when he shifted to ECW, did WWE decided to take this theme and kind of push it all together, and I mean that literally. I think to try and stop the you suck, dun, 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 you suck chance, they just thought, well, if we get rid of that rhythm by genuinely just pushing it all together, we can circumvent this. It is just a terrible idea all around. If you don't know what I'm talking about, again, go and listen to it. Listen to the original, and then listen to that one, and you'll think you gave a project to your 13 year old sister who's never used an editing suite before, and she just made this mess. Thank goodness Kurt Angle eventually just went, ah, if you want to tell me I suck, you can tell me I suck. Sometimes when you've got something that works, don't muck around with it, damn it. Number six, The Rock. A little secret about The Rock, or at least how I feel about his entrance themes, I totally believe he's only ever had one good one. I know, and that's when he was just coming out of the nation and he had that that went bow, but the, the bow, bow, and had lyrics like, the rock says, the rock, the rock, the rock. It just fit in perfectly. With all that said, when he did come back to the company in 2003 as Hollywood Rock, WWE knew they had a problem. The fans were in love with Dwayne Johnson and his charisma and presence were just bleeding onto the screen. So you didn't really want to have a piece of music that made them want to cheer. You remember the one that he had before he went away, just went, if you swirl, and it was, well, it was inclined to make the crowd sing along with the champ. So what we did here is that we tied into all his actor stuff and we had this really drawn out light show and picture show and you had that whisper by The Rock instead and it just undermined the fact that he was not trying to get cheers and really he'd come back from the land of celebrities thinking he was the best thing since sliced bread and Brad Pitt. So you were meant to realize that The Rock now thought that he was better than all of us and that was replicated in his music. The riff had slowed down and it just felt more grandiose and that is another nod or tip of the cap I should say to whoever was in charge of that, I'm gonna guess it was Jim Johnston, who, by the way, should be in the Hall of Fame, and it's ridiculous that he's not. The man just had a way with all of this. Number five, X-Pac. All that ever comes to my head when I think about X-Pac's music is that one he had, where it started by some guy shouting, X-Pac, and another guy just replied, X-Pac, strange. And then from nowhere, he was given a song written by Uncle Cracker. And if you like Uncle Cracker, that's okay, that's good. I know literally nothing about him, but it just didn't work. Again, this random voice would kick things off by going, hey, yo, you dealing with the X Factor. And then like some country song started playing and out came X-Pac who looked like he'd never listened to a country song in his life. And it may be his favorite genre of music, but none of this added up. It was like a jigsaw puzzle, but you'd just taken pieces from different ones and thrown them into the package. It was almost like it wanted you to get up and start waving your hands in the air. I still can't fathom it to this day. It is just, well, it's bad. Like it's a really, not only is it a bad piece of music, but as a wrestler's entrance theme that is meant to light people up and get those butts off of seats, it's actually peculiar. Sometimes it keeps me up at night. It really, really does. I try and process, I try and think who green lit this. Surely Sean Waltman didn't sign off on this, but he's the poor sap that had to put up with it. This could be one of the worst of all time. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Number four, Chris Jericho. Break the walls down, which was Chris Jericho's original and best WWE theme, never needed to be changed. The moment he debuted in 1999 using that, it was just a phenomenal piece of work and something you could listen to in the gym and get all pumped because it was just so good. And then all of a sudden for a few weeks in 2002, he was given a revamped version by Saliva, I suppose because WWE was just so desperate to sell any kind of record they could. They loved music back then. They thought, oh, well, we can give Chris Jericho a new theme and that's another way to justify it. It did not work, which I think is summed up by the fact that yes, it barely lasted 21 days. It's called King of My World if you are interested in listening to it and you will not believe the opening riff which sounds like every single opening riff 
you have ever heard. It even sounds a bit like the Raw opening riff, and he was on Raw, ah, oh, it's just baffling. It also never goes anywhere. Verse, chorus, pre-chorus, ending. It's like this the entire time, and it doesn't peak at any stage, which you obviously need a restless theme entrance to do, because you want him to get on the ropes, and you want everything to explode. I would still say that X-Pax was worse than this, but in terms of a decision when Chris Jericho never needed brand new entrance music, well, it ranks up there. Number three, The Undertaker. I've said it before and I'll say it again. No, I did not like Biker Taker. I understand that he needed to change up his character in order to stay relevant, but I was born and bred on the dead man and I just couldn't accept that he had come back as a real guy. I was meant to believe he wasn't alive and now I'm just being told, oh, he's alive again. This was doubly hard for me because when he first did do this, he obviously was coming out to Limp Biscuits rolling. Now, in hindsight, everybody laughs at Fred Durst and everybody laughs at Limp Biscuit like, <laughs> what a rubbish band. But that was not the case. They were at the peak of their powers in 1999 and 2000 and were a massive band that was selling at arenas all over the world. So to actually have this association did do something for the phenom. However, we should go through some of the lyrics, and excuse me, they're down there, so just ignore my eyes for a second. But now I know y'all be loving this shib right here. Obviously, they've used a swear word. B double O G E R red is right here. That's booger red, whatever. People in the house don't put them hands in the air because I don't care and you won't care. And there was some did this. I don't know, man, you tell me. There are some good things here, and there are some bad things. There are some pros and some cons. And when this was gone, he went to that, you done it now, you gone and made a big mistake music, which was even more dull. Just give me the bong, man, or the dong. Can't say Undertaker's dong, someone goes tee hee hee, whatever, the big bell. Give me the big bell, give me the funeral march. Although actually, controversially, I think the Undertaker's best music is from the Attitude Era, the one that's on volume three. WWE, the music, music volume three, with that guitar that goes wow. That's his best one. Get mad at me in the comments. Number two, Triple H. People are still having this argument today, which is incredible because it's been going on for 21 years. 21 years. But basically, in 1999, Triple H couldn't figure out which theme song he'd rather use. He had My Time Is Now, which again, people are still behind, or he had Motorhead's The Game, which for my money is one of the best entrance movies of all time. And yeah, the first one I mentioned, sung by Chris Warren, who also did Degeneration X's theme, is actually okay. The issue is the lyrics where he would just scream, my time is now, my time, my time, and it just took away from everything. When you shift over to what Lemmy and Motorhead did though, my word, I mean, not only do you have one of the best metal acts in the history of the world doing your own song, but even that first chord, that power chord that they hit, just makes the hairs on your arm stand up and you know that something big is about to happen. I mean, it's Motorhead for goodness sake, Metallica, Megadeth, all these bands. If you can get them to do your entrance music, you should move heaven and earth to do that. More importantly, it also tied into this change that Triple H was about to go through because gone was all the ball gags and the dorkiness and now he was a serious wrestler who was gonna go after the world championship and you knew that to be true because his theme was so damn good. Number one, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Steve Austin first experimented with a new theme tune in the year 2000, where he thought, hey, I'm still a pretty good baby face, but I could add something new to my act. So he called up Disturbed and said, would you like to scream and shout over this music? And they went, of course you would, wrestling's massive right now. And that's what we've got. And look, it's okay, it's all right. The problem as always is the original was so amazing, couldn't even come close. This would rear its head again a year or so later when he decided he wanted to be a bad guy and he joined the Alliance. And we still had the glass breaking and you still had the basic structure, but instead of the da 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 now WWE had decided it should go and you're just like, this doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you wanted to change it, just change it completely, especially because we all knew that eventually Stone Cold Steve Austin would be going back to being a good guy. And when that happened, when the original theme returned, we would have popped our socks off. There was also the issue that I would sit on the edge of my sofa like, am I having some kind of issue in my brain? Because it kind of sounds the same, but it also sounds utterly different. Maybe my television is broken, I better send it back. And again, this was 2001. It was not easy to send TVs back in 2001. There were CRTs, they had massive backs. But maybe it does tie into everything with Steve Austin's heel run. It was a little bit mistimed, it was ill-advised, and ultimately, when we look back, we shouldn't have done it. He was the best of all baby faces, and we should have kept him there, and also, should have kept his music the same. Which very interestingly, Jim Johnson has said in the public was based on Rage Against the Machine. So now you know. 
Now, don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know about any other wrestlers theme tunes that you like, that you didn't like, ones that changed and made you want to smash your head into the wall. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, then head over to whatculture.com, read yourself some articles. Follow What Culture on Twitter, What Culture WWE. And watch more videos here on What Culture Wrestling. My name is Simon from What Culture. I'm pretty sure my favorite themes of all time would be Stone Cold Steve Austin's The Undertaker of that volume three, Kane's and Triple H's, but I'm gonna regret this now because I will have forgotten one and it will make me really sad. Sting's really good, The Four Horsemen is really good. Let's just stop this, but let me know yours. Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture here to let you know we want your live event videos, whether that be something that happened after the cameras stopped rolling or your reaction to something amazing that went down at the show you were at. Stuff like this. One of the other sweetest things I've ever seen was just recently when we saw Roman Reigns kick the shit out of cancer and come back on Monday Night Raw. So make sure you send them to us in all the usual ways. You can tweet them at us, you can send them to us on Facebook, you can email them to us. Hell, if it's your sort of thing, you can stick them on a memory stick and post them to What Culture. But the one thing you need to remember is good, bad. Thanks for watching. Bye.